Hi guys, it's Sophie. So I wanted to do a book haul with you guys today. I went and bought some books today for the first time in ages. Um, and I just wanted to chat through what I've got and what I'm currently reading. Um, the first thing I thought I'd show you is not as exciting as the other ones, but this is my next textbook. Um, I've just finished doing an exam, which is my first master's exam. It's taken over the whole of my life for the last um, sort of two months, but that one's done. So I'm back on to my next module, which is performance management. Um, and this is my next textbook. So this is the most expensive book I've bought in the last month. Um, I haven't obviously gotten into it yet. I'm having this weekend off after having done the exam on Tuesday this week. Um, and then next weekend, we'll be back into that world again. Um, I thought I'd just share that and where I'm at. Um, but I think it's going to be really nice. I've got now until May, my next exam. Um, so I think it's going to be really nice to have some time in between with some more relaxed version of studying rather than exams which was just quite intense um, and there's only one exam left and then I'm done for exams for this whole like degree path which is really lovely so that's the first thing I have then recently for some reason I've been reading lots of self-help stuff rather than like my normal non-fiction um, and the one I'm currently reading is Grit um, I got this not that long ago um, and I'm about halfway through it uh, it talks about the reasons why people succeed and grit is essentially like the ability to keep developing a skill over time and not giving up. So it's kind of hard work and resilience. Um, and I'm enjoying this one, um, though I don't know that I'm that gritty. Um, so sometimes when you're reading books and you're like, I don't identify with that, um, they're not as intrinsically enjoyable as the ones you're like, yeah, I'm really good at this. Um, yeah, so this is the one that I'm reading at the minute. I'm mostly reading this one at night before I go to sleep um, and there's another one that I will talk about at some point soon um, which is about habit tracking and I'm trying really hard to keep up some new habits um, the first of which I don't know if I showed this to you guys before but um, I really want to make gratitude something I do better I'm not very good at it at the minute um, I tend to find I focus on the negatives an awful lot and don't take time to identify when I feel grateful so I bought this one from Etsy. Um, it's really cute, I'll just show you. So it just has a definition of gratitude and the little book and then the inside is just plain. Um, and I put some prompts in the front and then each day I write out a little gratitude journal. Um, so I'm enjoying that one, though I've got to keep keeping on with it. Thus the next book. <laughs> um, so the next book I got is this um, to-do list planner. Um, I love to do list planners and now that I'm working at home for at least the next six months um, I wanted to get a few more bits of stationery. Um, it's really cute but the thing I like is it has, I'll show you like a blank, actually no I'll show you page one. So you can choose like the day of the week you're on and the date, then what are you grateful for, um, what do you need to pick up and then what you've eaten in a day, how much you've drunk in a day fitness, what you're doing to exercise, any times you need to remember your to-do list um, and it goes through like that and it's really useful like having, this is a, definitely a life to-do rather than a work to-do one, um, but at the back, how it's like filling this in yeah, I'm waiting until the 1st of October because it's like a year planner, but it's got a habit tracker, so you can choose, I think that's four, three or four habits you're tracking and then each day of the month the my little eyes picking up. Each day of the month you can note whether you've done it or not. So you have like a visual depiction over a year of how well you've developed that habit. Um, so I'm really excited to start using that one. Um, I've been, I use this one up until my exam and then I haven't, I've just been kind of taking my head out trying to make myself do anything um, for a few days. So I'm looking forward to getting back into doing that one and on the 1st of October, like restarting tracking my gratitude and also exercise, which I'm doing really well with. Um, so those are those ones. So this is all like self-help, um, motivation, personal development type stuff, um, which I never really had that much time for, but I think it's about finding the right books. The like, not to sound like disparaging about it, but the kind of like supermarket self-help, like you know, I don't know, things like hug yourself happier or something, like connection with love, like those kind of coffee table, really quick read stuff is not so much me as things that are more evidence-based or research-based. 
Um, and that's what I'm kind of leaning towards a bit at the minute. Um, the other one I've got that's like similar um, sense to it is Brene Brown. You guys know I've read Brene Brown before. Actually, I've listened to Brene Brown before. Um, and this is an anniversary edition, 10th anniversary edition of The Gifts of Imperfection, um, which I haven't listened to, um, but I've listened to quite a lot of her, so I kind of know what to anticipate. But I really like her in terms of that like vulnerable, self-helpy approach. Um, and I didn't own a single one of her books, so I'd listened to, I think, like four or five of them. Um, so it's nice to have one like physically on my bookshelf. And then I have one more non-fiction, um, which I'm also currently reading, but it's not self-helpy. Um, and that one is The Men Who Hate Women um, by Laura Bates. So if you haven't heard of her before, she's the lady who set up the Everyday Sexism Project. Um, and this is looking at like incel and like MRA style um, internet communities. It's very hard to read. Um, I'm only 34 pages in so far and I've had to stop a few times. Um, but I really like her and her writing and what she does. Um, so looking forward to reading this one. I'm going to read some more of it in a bit. And then I picked up three fiction books, um, which is really exciting. Two of them are signed, which is lovely. Um, the first is Daddy by Emma Klein. Um, the Girls was the first book I was ever sent for review on Booktube. And it felt really nice to see her second book like out and be like, oh, I'm going to buy it because it was such a big deal for me at the time when I was first starting to like have a book sent to me. Um, it's a short story collection. There's three short stories in here. Um, the first of which is about a man whose son has done something violent at school. The second one is about a woman, I think, doing sex work in L.A. And the last one is about a family at Christmas dealing with domestic abuse um, or like abusive parental figures um one imagines it's the dad so yeah I think that's exciting um and I really like to see how she's developed from girls because I liked it but I wanted something more from her so I'm intrigued um, and then on the theme of like people who I've read before and I was like hmm, nearly there for me um is Daisy Johnson um and this book is Sisters Apologies if these are like super common already and I'm talking over it. I haven't because I haven't been involved in like books or reading for like a long time with COVID stressing me out and then <laughs> exams stressing me out. Um, it may be that everybody and their mothers already read this, but I feel it sounded cool. Um, it's about two sisters who are living in like a really remote um, rural house and the house is like creepy and um, if you've been here for a while you know that like autumn is my peak like creepy unsettling horror like time um, and I just want to read everything about that and it's like just getting cold now like the last few days have been the first cold days which is very exciting so um, I'm gonna give this one a go and I think I might try and buy some more Shirley Jackson as well and then the last one I picked up is by an author I've never heard of before and I really didn't know that much about at all um, but this was Nogami by Sue Miller um, now I have a bit of like a relationship with books about marriage in that I've never been able to relate to them that well um, but with Tom and I getting married in less than a year now I was like it's time to try another book about marriage and maybe you might enjoy it um, so this one's about what I'm going wrong my life my reading life is always about reading stuff that's gone wrong um, but this is about a couple who very early into their relationship um, I think the woman finds out the man was cheating on her like during their engagement um, and it's about whether or not that breaks this like new couple's marriage <laughs> fingers crossed that'll be nothing like our experience um, but I always enjoy reading things that relate to me in some way in my sense of life and I think like without the that experience of like betrayal um that new married bit would be something really interesting to read about because most of the books I've read already about marriage seem to be more like mid years of marriage like you've been with them forever um and that kind of new marriage isn't something I've read about very much um so that one is the last one that I've bought um so that's really exciting I've still got quite, I've got quite a big TBR for me at the minute, I've probably got like another seven books um, on my TV I haven't read yet. Um, and I have got through a few of them from my last video. Thank you guys for telling me which ones are worth the while. Um, and I've got rid of a couple that um, either had like really mixed views or I tried and I didn't love. Um, but I still have quite a few um, to get through. I haven't really found a book in a while that I've kind of 
like sunk into properly. Um, I've struggled with it quite a bit, like finding my thoughts are quite flitty and I don't have the ability to sit down and concentrate for as long of a period as maybe um, I would have done before. Um, and I think part of that might just be like exposure. I've read, I think like 48, 49 books so far this year. Um, and normally I read like 100 to 150. So I've probably read about half of what I normally have and they've, they've been like um, more spaced out maybe than normal. Um, I certainly haven't had like an experience this year at all, like since January where I've sat down for a whole afternoon with a book um, that just like hasn't happened really. Um, it's been more like I read for as long as I can maintain that concentration and I'm okay with that. Like, I think this year has just been really weird. Um, and I'm feeling good about the fact that like weirdly, I'm feeling good about the fact that now I know I'm going to be at home for a really long period of time. I can kind of stop worrying about cha everything changing really quickly again, if that makes sense. Um, and I feel like if we have a second national lockdown, at least I've done it once before and I know what it feels like and looks like. Um, and I'm just feeling a bit more steady than when I wasn't sure like whether I was going back to work in a, like in a few months or whether I'd be staying at home forever or like, you know, all of those questions. Um, and now that my exam's done as well, it just feels there's a lot of relief, I think, um, with it. And it gives me a sense of like ability to plan a bit further ahead and that is something that I find really helpful to manage like the way I'm feeling in a minute um, or like through a period of time. Um, I don't know whether that's the same for everybody. I think most people don't love change, but I really like planning. Um, so all in all, I think like now I have that security in terms of what's happening with work and I have that sense of like, oh my God, my exam's finally over. <laughs> um, I can have a bit of a chill few months really, like obviously I'll still be studying, but I'll be writing an essay, not revising. Um, and I think it will just feel quite nice. I'm, I'm excited for this autumn. I'm scared Christmas isn't gonna happen, but I think the end of the year for me feels much safer and nicer than the beginning did. Um, I hope you guys are all doing okay. And it's nice just to check in. Um, I hope that I'll be able to keep checking in. Um, I know I'm very sporadic this year, like every everything, it's not just you guys, everything in my life has been very sporadic this year. Um, but I'm glad I'm still here and chatting and sharing and yeah, it's lovely to see your comments and see you chat back even though I'm I'm not a very good social media human at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still lovely, I still want to keep doing it and look after yourselves until I see you again. All right, bye. <laughs>